We start now? Yes. Okay. Okay. Hello okay. and welcome yeah. everyone. Mm -hmm. Our best welcome to our today's distinguished guest, Professor Lian Zhang from the Tianjin University and also to Professor José Cassiolato, our main discussion of the webinar today, and Marina Shapiro, who, uh, who, who we will moderate this webinar. Uh, they are both professors here in the Institute of Economics of the Federal University of Rio de Janeiro. Professor Lian, it's a great uh -huh. joy for us to see you once again very well and to have you in our Ready CC webinar. We do, do apologize to invite you to do this presentation starting at 9 p.m. in your local time. Renewed, thanks. Uh, we, <laughs> okay. we, we, we remember, Professor Lia, when we first met at the Center for Development Studies in, in Kerala, in India, in 2016, uh -huh. And also you're coming to Rio, to our university here in 2017. And also that you stayed with us in the middle of huge refurbishing, remember that, of our building in the Institute of Economics. <laughs> oh, what a shame. And that you uh, would spend your nights communicating with your research team in Tianjin due to the difference of time. I, we remember that. We also remember very vividly our trip to Tianjin in May 2018. We were very impressed with how fully, uh, how new, how fully equipped and well organized was, was your Center for Innovation at the Tianjin University and, and its beautiful campus. During the trip, Three weeks we stay in China, we could also experience the rapid innovation driven transformation happening not only in Tianjin, but also in other Chinese places that we had a chance of visiting. Among the several things we learned uh, while we were in Tianjin, was the fantastic work you and your colleagues were doing by collecting and analyzing micro-narratives in communities using grassroots innovation. You, you just mentioned that you have published 10 books about this experience. Congratulations for that. We also could learn, uh, would like to learn uh, much more about uh, uh, what we saw when we visit China, your sustainability programs, the sustainable smart buildings, infrastructures, and cities using uh, artificial intelligence technologies to organize self-sustainable activities. It was very impressive. We were really very glad to be there. Professor Lian, we are Hi. looking forward to your presentation today, understanding the regional innovation system of, of China we're focusing on the case of Tianjin. Uh, this team is really exciting and very important uh, for us. Um, I think uh, now Professor Cassiolato, who will be your discussion today, but also is the, the coordinator of this series of webinar, would like to, to um, introduce, welcome you and also present you. Thank you very much for being here today with us. Professor Cassolato. Good morning, everybody. Good morning, Professor Lian Zhang. It's a tremendous pleasure to, to have your webinar today. And uh, we, I think in the name of, of Red Sister as a whole, uh, and, and with Elena, uh, I really welcome you uh, and uh, we are certainly looking forward very much to your presentation. Helena made a, a very extensive uh, uh, contribution telling us 
uh, telling everybody how we we connect in the last few years. And I, I certainly vividly remember the three weeks we spent under your guidance and under your uh, fantastic uh, the fantastic host that you are in, in Tianjin in May 2018. We learned a lot there, we interacted with your students, with your people, we, uh, we, we lived inside the, your university. It was really a, a, a fantastic experience. But uh, let me uh, give to the audience a few words about uh, you. You are a very modest person because you asked for your CV and you sent just a few words. But uh, I have to, 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 to pinpoint that you are now director of the Center for Innovation and Entrepreneurship at Tianjin University of Finance and Economic, China. You made uh, extensive research in grassroots innovation in China and in India as well. Huh? Uh, uh, you also coordinated a series, of, a series of international projects in this area in the past. Uh, you are mentioning before that you published 10 books in, in Chinese and some books in English as well. I have one with me about uh, this here that you gave to us. It's about sustainable biomass practice in China, but you also have several important and key articles in this issue of innovation and the entrepreneurship of uh, small farmers uh, in your country. Uh, you, you moved, as you mentioned uh, a few moments ago, you, you moved recently and, uh, and changed the, uh, the main subject of your of studies uh, in, into this area of corporate entrepreneurship and innovation. Uh, and uh, anyway, it's, it's a pleasure again to, to have you here. We are looking forward not only to your webinar, but in continuing our, our relationship that has to be a bit different now in this pandemic times that, uh, that uh, are, are, are threatening the, the, the whole world uh, in 2020. Please, uh, please Professor Li and Zhang, uh, the, the, the floor is yours and we are looking forward to your presentation. Thank you very much. Okay. Thank you, thank you, Professor Casnado. Uh, thank you, Professor Halina. <laughs> thank you for all the kind of words and, uh, you know, a very uh, happy memory we were together. Uh, we hope we will meet very soon. Hello, friends. And, uh, you know, that's my uh, pleasure to be here to uh, uh, explain the regional innovation system of China. So I'd like to use the case of my city, uh, Tianjin. Uh, first, first uh, let's see the, the general picture, the general picture of the innovation systems of China. Okay, so this is the governance uh, structure of the innovation systems of China. So from this uh, graph, we can see that, uh, you know, that system is under the leadership of the State Council of China. So for the State Council, they, uh, they have uh, uh, a special committee to coordinate of this uh, system. And uh, under this uh, committee, so we can see that uh, NDRC, Actually, that's, uh, that's National Development and Reform Committee. So this NDRC is let to be the higher. I mean, in the ranking, we can see that NDRC is let to be the higher than the other ministries. The other ministries, you know, like we have, um, you know, the most, the Ministry of Science and Technology. MOE is the Ministry of Education and the Ministry of Finance, the Ministry of uh, Commerce. Uh, since uh, NDRC, the National Development and the Reform Committee, so this organization is coordinate uh, big projects. And uh, um, so for the ranking, it's, it's uh, let it be the higher. 
than the other ministries. Uh, actually, for the innovation system of China, it's under uh, the coordination of the most, the Ministry of uh, Science and the Technology. So from this graph, we can see that. And uh, since uh, the Ministry of Education is uh, in the whole universities and the schools are under the Ministry of uh, Education, therefore, lots of joint research supported uh, by the most and the Ministry of uh, Education. So let's see, come to uh, most, the Ministry of uh, Science and Technology. Uh, you see, uh, there is a national, uh, uh, sorry, uh, the NSFC is the Natural Science, Fund Natural Science uh, Foundation of China. Natural Science Foundation of China actually is under the leadership of the State Council, uh, directly under the leadership of the State Council, but also is jointly, you know, under the leadership of the most. So the Natural Science Foundation of China, I think uh, this one is very similar to uh, to to the sim uh, similar foundations in other countries. So they uh, basically support the basic research. Uh, in China, the Na Natural Science, uh, Natural Science Foundation also gives support to the, uh, to the, like the policy research. They also give this kind of uh, support. Uh, recently, I think uh, just one or two weeks um, ago, so there is a joint, uh, uh, it's like uh, crossing uh, disciplines. There's a special uh, sector under the uh, Natural Science Foundation. So they uh, cover different areas, different uh, disciplines. Uh, was just, uh, 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 that's a new one uh, to support this joint research for the scholars from different uh, area. Uh, there's something quite new for this uh, Natural Science Foundation. And uh, also, under the most, there's some uh, programs or some uh, government organizations, like uh, one is uh, TORCH, the TORCH Center. The TORCH Center is uh, responsible for high-tech technology, uh, high-tech uh, uh, innovation, you know, try to develop uh, uh, high-tech innovation. So that is one. And uh, SAIFEA, that is for uh, state uh, administration of foreign exports uh, affairs. So since, uh, you know, uh, recent, uh, not recently, actually for many years, uh, China, we focus on the original innovation. So therefore that's very important. You know, we, uh, the scholars from different area, from different parts of the world, uh, you know, we will work together. So that is why, you know, we have this uh, special organization. The purpose of this organization is try to attract overseas scholars. So uh, we uh, invite foreign scholars to have a joint research with the Chinese scholars. That is a very, very important uh, organization. Uh, another one is, um, mm, let's see, it's a China Association uh, for Productivity Promotion Center, CAPPC is un also under the most. You see, earlier this uh, CAPPC, this uh, Productivity Promotion Center, uh, that the purpose for this center is to promote the development or the SME innovation or the innovations for the SMEs. Uh, that is. Um, uh, the or original purpose of this uh, organization, this kind of organization. But uh, recently, recently uh, for this productivity promotion center, it's more like, uh, you know, they play a role. It's, it's like a, a service center. They provide service, uh, provide service to the, you know, SMEs. So that is under the, you know, uh, the, the most. Another one is the state uh, key 
library. Um, state key library is under the most, but uh, uh, no, since uh, the Chinese government, we promote, you know, the call, uh, the, the joint, uh, joint research or joint work or joint, uh, you know, uh, activities. So the state uh, key library uh, is also actually not only under the most, it's like, um, you know, maybe uh, the most under the local government. Um, the local government. So, you know, different uh, government organizations, they uh, support the state key library, uh, uh, the state key lab. So that is the main uh, body. Most is the main uh, uh, coordinating body of the system, of the innovation system of China. So that is this. And uh, Another one is uh, CAS, uh, China Academy of Science. China Academy of Science um, uh, in the different parts of China, uh, either Beijing or some other province or other cities. So we have this uh, research institute under the CAS, the uh, China Academy of Science. Uh, so that one is uh, uh, to conduct the research and uh, uh, promote innovation through this uh, knowledge innovation pro uh, program. So that is what another one is here is uh, CIE is the um, China of Academy of Engineering uh, China Academy of Engineering. So this one they don't have uh, the research uh, institute under uh, under CAE. So they only provide uh, policy suggestions to the government. And the, another one is uh, SAMR. Um, SAMR is the State Administration for Market Regulations. So a very important organization is IP office. The state IP office is under this uh, uh, ministry. So in the last uh, few years, the Chinese government uh, paid much attention to this uh, IP issue. Uh, I think that's related to our national strategy, you know, for the original innovations, you no know, things we focus on this, so that uh, IP, the patent is very, very important for us. So that is this. And then uh, let's come to uh, the financial support to research. So uh, the Ministry of Finance, the Ministry of Commerce, and also jointly work together with the, um, with the state administration of, uh, of uh, uh, taxation. So they give uh, tax support or tax uh, deduction uh, to the, you know, to the, the uh, enterprise, I mean, who uh, conduct, uh, or those uh, uh, enterprise, they conduct uh, research. So they, they give some uh, incentives. Uh, that is, um, another one, you know, uh, under NDRC, under NDRC, they have some uh, organizations. Uh, one is um, NERC. NERC is um, what? It's a National Engineering Research Center. It's NERC. So they um, promote the cooperation between research institute and industry. Or they promote the research, uh, you know, uh, actually the university and the industry. They promote this uh, kind of cooperation. Uh, another one under NDRC is uh, ICETC. ICETC is uh, the State Economic and the Trade Commission. So ICETC is uh, the purpose or the, the aims of this uh, organization is to accelerate enterprise technology innovation and investment in uh, ISN. Uh, in science and technology. 
Another one is uh, NEL, National Engineering Lab, is to promote in industrial uh, independent innovation capability. You see how this uh, structure, uh, actually that is a very, very uh, basic one, uh, very, very uh, brief one. So uh, in China, we have, uh, we have different kind of uh, new organizations. So it's like organizational innovation. Uh, those organizational innovation basically, uh, basically focus on the joint, you know, the joint uh, organization, joint something like, uh, you know, uh, between uh, different uh, uh, province or the, the cooperation among different province, different uh, uh, cities, or the cooperation uh, between, uh, you know, the key universities and the local government, or the cooperation between the big uh, uh, the enterprise and the or the university. So this kind of uh, uh, innovative organizations, so it's uh, quite uh, quite new. And also, you know, it's very, uh, very, very uh, uh, active and uh, full of energy. So, you know, different kind of things happen uh, in uh, the system. So that is the uh, governance structure. I mean, the the basic structure of this uh, system. And uh, let's see the national, the, nas the, the picture of the national system uh, from different levels. So you see, uh, we are just uh, explained at the central government, you know, that level. And then China is, uh, we, the, the ranking of our system is uh, we have the central government and then uh, come to the provincial level. Uh, provincial level also we have some uh, municipal cities. So in China in total we have four un uh, municipal cities. Tianjin is one of this, uh, the cities. And uh, then uh, under the municipal city actually that's come to prefecture level. Uh, under the prefecture level they come to the county. Under the county then we come to town, township and then uh, come to village. So the only difference between the provincial level, the governance structure of this uh, system, uh, the difference uh, between proven, uh, provincial one and the central one is um, at the provincial level, we don't have the CAS and also we don't have the, the China Academy of Engineering. So for that too, only at the central level, we have the China Academy of, of Science and the China Academy of Engineering. The others are the same, others are the same. And then uh, come to the, to the county level. The county level, at the county level, we don't have uh, the development and the reform committee. That uh, organization is not there. And uh, the others uh, is there, it's the same. Uh, you see at the county level, how the organizations or the enterprise, you know, they uh, apply for the products, uh, apply for the pr products, they come to the, the Ministry of, uh, no, sorry, the, uh, the Science and Technology Bureau. Uh, uh, for the, no things uh, the, the Ministry of Science and Technology. So they are the, uh, I mean, this organization is uh, the, uh, the main body uh, to coordinate the whole activities of the innovation system of China. But actually no things um, the most, they can't support the whole the products in a cover different area. So they could, they can only support some general, uh, general products or some key products. So for the products that related to certain kind of area and for each uh, ministry, they have their own research uh, institute or their own research uh, academy. So they give support, uh, folks on their own area 
Uh, that is also, you know, the situation in China. And uh, now let's come to another one. Another, we, we take uh, the agriculture industry. As an example, we can see the, uh, the you know, how the um, innovation systems of the of certain kind of industry, how this um, system work. Uh, for the example of uh, agricultural industry, no, since uh, let's come to the agriculture one, then uh, we have to focus on the Ministry um, of Agriculture and the Rural Affairs. That is M A R A, M A R A. So under this ministry, they have uh, uh, the National Agriculture Technology Extension Service Center and China Academy of uh, uh, Agriculture Science. Agriculture Science. You see, under the Ministry of uh, Agriculture and uh, Rural Affairs. Uh, research achievements extension is quite important. I mean, the, of, of course, uh, the research, uh, the, the research is important and the research achievements extension. So that is the two important organizations under the Ministry of uh, Agriculture. And then come to the provincial level and then come to the county level. So another important part is uh, this one. It's a MHRSS. It's the Ministry of uh, Human Resource and Social Security. For the human resource and the social security, uh, the The uh, main connection with the uh, in uh, with the agriculture industry is uh, they train the people, they train the farmers who uh, immigrate to the city, who uh, work in the city, and uh, so for this uh, ministry, they play the role to train those people. Now, since for so many years. Uh, you know, the China, the, the economic development so uh, developed so fast for more than, uh, I think, almost uh, 40 years, almost uh, 40 years. So the farmer workers, they play a very important role. And the skilled farmer workers, so, I mean, the, to train the farmers to have the basic uh, capability of working, that is under the, the Ministry of Human Resources resource and social security. So they play a very uh, important role to this. Mm. So that is uh, under CETTIC. CETTIC is a China Employment Training Technology Instruction Center. So now since uh, we need a uh, uh, capable people, we need, uh, uh, you know, professionals, we need uh, skillful workers. And uh, farmers, uh, you know, they are the main uh, working force in the city. So the training to the farmers is uh, quite important. It's under the Ministry of Human Resource and the Social Security. And now let's come to the, to this end, the, the right hand. Uh, that is the CPC, the Central Committee of the Com uh, Communist, Communist of China. Actually, this is a party system. The party, under this uh, party system, uh, we have uh, cast the CST. CST is, uh, I think this China Association of Science and the Technology. So this organization is for the uh, for the uh, researchers and the professionals. So that is the organization of the researchers and the professionals. So that is under the party system. And even at the 
county level, we have uh, this association. So actually even, I think under the county level is the township, is even in the township, we have this association for, uh, for science and technology. Uh, that is the, you know, the researchers organization. So that's some, uh, uh, some uh, cooperation, some cooperation between this uh, party system and the uh, administri administrative system of China. So that is one. And then we come to this uh, small example. Actually, the innovation system of China, especially at the local level, is very, very uh, flexible. It's quite flexible. So this one is a small case we developed, uh, you know, when we traveled in the, in the village. We found that a farmer's, uh, you know, one farmer, he set up a, a research um, uh, association of uh, innova innovators. Association of Innovators is um, AOI, is here, of the county, is so Hua County. So he's a farmer, since uh, this farmer, he's uh, also innovator. So he was invited to uh, work uh, in the party organization of this county. And also he's very uh, innovative. And he set up this, uh, far, this uh, uh, association of in, uh, inventions or inventors. So this farmer's uh, organization uh, actually play a very, very important role in this county, in this county uh, to uh, promote the innovation of the county. So it's a very, uh, I mean, this uh, small example is showing that in China at the grassroots level, at the uh, county level is quite, uh, the system is very uh, flexible. So now let's come to the case of Tianjin. So that is the map of China. And uh, here, this part, this part is, uh, you know, Tianjin is a coast uh, city. It's also a municipal city. So we can see here. So Tianjin, this uh, green one, uh, next to uh, Bohai Sea, and then also next to Beijing, only, uh, you know, 120 kilometers away from Beijing is by this uh, super fast train, only half hour. And then Beijing, Tianjin, and the Hebei province. Hebei province is uh, here. So uh, we have the national strategy is uh, Beijing, Tianjin, and Hebei. So for this uh, three, uh, I mean, actually two cities plus one province. So they uh, uh, we call that uh, coordinating, it's more like a coordinating units. So, that is Tianjin. Uh, no, Tianjin, uh, since that's a municipal city, and the population is um, is uh, 15 million, it's quite a big number, quite big number. And uh, the GDP, sorry, the GDP uh, ranking is 23, 23 among 31 provinces. Um, uh, actually, you know, Tianjin, we have the number. Uh, 1978, so we are number three. We were number three uh, among the cities in China. And then uh, 1922, uh, sorry, 1992, we, are number, we were number five. Uh, 2008, we were number six. And uh, 2016, we are number seven. 2019, we were number 10. Oh, this year, 2020. So we were not in top 10 among the cities of China, not the province of China. But actually Tianjin is a province. Tianjin is not a city. So now even in the ranking of the cities, so we are, you know, the rankings keep going down. Actually people got worried what happened to Tianjin. So we don't know. That's some uh, photos of Tianjin. So this, uh, the right one is the Taida, uh, is a development, uh, economic development zone is in the Binghai 
new area of China is some, something. And then this studium, this two uh, studium is, uh, you know, is from my city, uh, sorry, it's, uh, it's my uh, university. So we have the, it's, it's not the national, it's, it's more like, a, you know, the basic practice. Uh, when we uh, have this uh, national sports games, and then uh, in many universities, the government uh, give uh, financial support to uh, build this uh, uh, st uh, studio uh, for the competition. But later on, after this uh, uh, national games, and then uh, the university can have this um, uh, this buildings. Those buildings mainly for the students, but also uh, uh, you know the people from outside. They can also use this one. Sorry, and uh, this uh, the left one is the Tianjin Chuanye uh, Bazaar with a history of uh, more than one hundred years. Uh, but uh, in the last few years, this this uh, very very old uh, bazaar is is almost uh, become empty. Become empty. That's uh, you know that's. That's also related to, you know, the e-commerce in China is the developed so fast and people get used to uh, to buy those things online. So this one is uh, for the railway station of China. Oh, sorry, of my city. And the next to uh, Haihe River. So that is the city. Uh, you know, the innovation system uh, uh, my understanding that that is not a died one. It's it's keep changing. It's keep moving. So let's see for the innovation system of Tianjin. So no, since uh, this system is moving, then uh, where the system will go? So that's related to the actually the government uh, uh, plan guide this uh, direction. So one is a uh, very very important. Because uh, you know we are only we just uh, a province, so we have to follow the national strategy. The national strategy is uh, Beijing, Tianjin, Hebei. That's a uh, coordinated development. So Tianjin is a part of the national strategy. So when we uh, make our plan, so we have to you know follow follow the national strategy. So that is what. Another one is uh, focus on original research. Uh, original research is uh, uh, is is um, is every. Uh, I mean, each uh, province they all have this uh, kind of. Uh, uh, it's like a direction. Another thing is uh, the technology achievements transfer. That's also you know you, we have to focus on this, and uh, focus on the enterprise. But the company become the innovative, the main innovative body. And uh, another one, <laughs> that's something very particular to China. It's uh, attracting talents. Actually, we compete, you know, each uh, province, each uh, city, even each uh, district, each um, uh, science and technology park. So they give a policy, special policy, to attract the, the talents from uh, other place. So they give uh, you know, a, very, a very, very good uh, policy for those uh, talents. So I think um, this is a very uh, uh, particular Chinese way, uh, particular Chinese way. Uh, that is one. Okay, that is direction. And then uh, come to how, how the system will go to the, uh, that direction. Uh, now we have the plan is uh, next year, by the end of next year. Uh, one is they focus on R&D investment. Once uh, they focus on R&D investment, so for the, uh, for the financial support they give to the research um, projects, usually they will ask, the companies already ask the universities, already ask the uh, the research institute. They also pay. They also put some money for the research. And uh, then uh, come to IP issue. So we uh, need to 
uh, have invention patents of more than uh, 40,000. And then set up, uh, you know, the platforms and the basic infrastructure. So another thing is, uh, you know, for different kind of uh, high tech companies, they also give the, you know, the exact number. So we have to reach, uh, we have to reach. So, you know, uh, very, very uh, specific, specific objectives to guide the, you know, guide the system to go, to go. Therefore, you know, to, uh, to meet these goals and the, to reach these goals. So the, the government, uh, they have the policy, you know, uh, to, uh, for the companies or for the research institute or for the university to apply for the product or to, to uh, apply for the support. Let's uh, see some examples. So uh, one example is the university. So for the university in the system, uh, since um, my city, actually my city, the research or the university, uh, the capability, research capability of the universities in my city is quite strong, uh, even in China. Uh, even in China. So for the universities, we focus on the research from zero to one, from zero to one. And also the universities, we have the national key labs, the, you know, science and technology parks, uh, incubators. And also the government, they support, or they encourage the university to ask, uh, to apply for the research products uh, jointly with the enterprise. Uh, and uh, more important, it's not just, uh, you know, it's not just uh, inside of Tianjin. It's also, you know, if you work together with uh, Beijing, with uh, Hebei province, uh, which means, uh, you know, uh, belong to this uh, Beijing, uh, Beijing, Tianjin and Hebei, uh, Hebei, this uh, uni, then you can uh, uh, easily get support. And also they, uh, they support the university uh, enterprise, uh, especially with uh, mixed ownership. And then uh, the competition. So, you know, the university, they set up branch either in Tianjin or outside Tianjin is also encouraged. And then uh, technology, uh, research achievements transform. And the technology specialist, that is a very, very interesting program in, in my city, uh, in my city. Actually it's in China, but uh, my city, this one is uh, very, uh, uh, very, uh, very active. So the university teachers, so, you know, each, uh, each, each professor or each uh, person, uh, they sign contract with the enterprise and then, uh, uh, they do the products for the enterprise, but um, at the beginning stage, no one pay for this. And only once you complete this uh, uh, research, I mean, the, uh, with this, uh, no, since you have the contract, so you complete the contract and then the professors can ask support from the Ministry of Science Bureau of the city. And uh, another thing is that the university, some university organizations, we are the government uh, service provider, which means we give service to, to the companies and government give our support. So that is uh, the university. And then we come to another example is the high-tech enterprise. The government support to this uh, high-tech enterprise uh, one is that they give financial support is uh, my city is uh, between uh, point three to uh, point five million RMB for this uh, high tech enterprise. And also there's a corporate income uh, tax deduction. So the, you know, the common uh, uh, enterprise is 25%. Uh, 
uh, for this uh, high tech enterprise is only 15. And uh, also, if you are, uh, if uh, the, uh, the service uh, organization or the service uh, company, if they help the, uh, if they help the other companies to apply for the high tech enterprise, so the government uh, give support to these service organizations. Uh, the total support is uh, one million. 1 million RMB, that is a quite a big number. This uh, policy also shows that actually, you no, know, uh, since we have the target, we have certain number of, uh, certain number of uh, high tech enterprise, uh, but it's very difficult to reach this number. Uh, you know, if uh, just uh, the companies, they apply by themselves, so it's quite difficult to do. So therefore the government uh, gives support to the, uh, to the service company, let them have the companies to apply for this uh, title, honorable title. So the condition to meet to, be, to become a high-tech enterprise. So one, you see, this, uh, the conditions actually is connected with, uh, with the directions and also with, uh, you know, the plans, how to go to this direction, how the innovation system of Tianjin to reach uh, this uh, uh, goals to reach these objectives. You see, they have the, uh, the patents, the number of patents, you know, they are required. And also they focus only certain kind of area, they are supported, the government gives support. Uh, uh, in my city in total, we have eight, eight areas, they give support. And another thing is, uh, you know, the R&D personals, uh, the number of the personals, you know, you, you have to meet a certain uh, uh, standards. And then uh, R&D inputs. So that's also related to R&D investment, uh, uh, you know, to that number. And then the income from high-tech products or service, that is related to technology achievements transfer. You see, how the government support you know, they give to the enterprise is to, you know, that for these conditions is to guide the enterprise, guide the common uh, companies to meet uh, the plan of the city. That's uh, some interconnection with the uh, innovation system. And then uh, let's come to another one. This uh, uh, is a baby, enterprise, maybe high-tech one. It's uh, quite simple to, to meet uh, this uh, standard. So one is, uh, you know, the revenue is uh, less than 0.1 million. It's a very small number. And then also the condition to meet is a very simple. It's very simple. It's like, uh, you know, patents or software or awarded in the competition. It's very, very simple. So for that one, it's they give uh, general support. They give general support to the uh, to the to the enterprise, to the high tech enterprise. That's also somehow related to to this uh, uh, to this innovation system of my city to reach uh, these goals, to uh, reach these goals under the you know under the uh, direction. So I just uh, give this uh, three examples. Uh, for the others, uh, you know, since we have many uh, different kind of uh, policies and uh, and uh, they uh, they give honorable titles to the enterprise. So since uh, um, the others, uh, more or less, quite similar. Uh, so I just uh, give this uh, three examples. So I think time, uh, yeah, it's almost uh, nine fifty. So that's all. Thank you. Hello. Oh. Yeah, thank you. I think that... Uh, thank you. Thank you, Lian, mm. for mm. your very uh, interesting and detailed presentation about the Chinese and the Qian system of innovation. I will now uh, present our discussant and uh, 
to, to initiate our debate. Uh, Professor José Casolato has a PhD from the University of Sussex and a postdoc doctorate uh, from University, University Pierre Mendes de, de France. He is an associate professor at the Institute of Economics, Federal University of Rio de Janeiro, and co the coordinator uh, of Redisich with uh, Professor Helena Lastris. He is a member of the Superior Council of uh, Fiocruz, Oswaldo Cruz Foundation, and was General Secretary and President of Globalix. He was Planning Secretary of Ministry of Science and Technology in Brazil. He is a member of the Editorial Board of Scientific Journals in Brazil and abroad, and has several books and scientific articles in the areas of economics of innovation, science, technology, and innovation policy and development. He has coordinated several research projects in Brazil and abroad. And now, Professor Cassiolato, I invite you to uh, make your comments on Lian's presentation. Thank you very much, Professor Marina Shapiro. Perhaps uh, if Lian could uh, finish the, the presentation, because uh, I, I still cannot uh, work, I don't know, Max perhaps can help us with this. Uh, hello? It's hello. necessary uh -huh. to, to end the presentation. To yes, end the presentation, but, uh, finish. Must be Professor Lee to close the, the Zoom. Professor Lian, could you please yeah, uh, yeah. close start. the presentation? I don't know if it, oh, okay, okay, I will do that. Moment. Okay. Thank you very ah, much. Okay. Thank you. Mm. That's better. I can see uh -huh. everybody here. Well, first of all, thanks very, very much, Professor Leon, for your presentation. Uh, thanks for giving us, first of all, uh, a very detailed uh, picture of the complex and comprehensive institutional organization and arrangements for science, technology, and innovation in, in your country. Uh, what uh, it really strikes us, uh, the complexity uh, and, and uh, particularly the very organized way of relating the, the different levels of government from the central government to the county or, or provincial level to the municipality and how these uh, institutions, one connect to uh, Another uh, and also thanks for for giving us a, a very detailed picture of uh, the the regional innovation in in Changi. Mm -hmm. China always strikes us. Huh? Uh, we are always every day is uh, uh, we got news, uh, fantastic news about innovation in China. I was reading yesterday huh? an article that. Uh, the title is China is a step closer to microchip independence. And uh, uh -huh. it's interesting because the article starts with a, with a quote from Sun Tzu, you know very well who Sun Tzu is, uh, mm -hmm. philosopher and Chinese general and strategist. And the, the, the quote is that if you know the enemy and know yourself, you do not fear the results of a hundred battles. And of course, this is a, this refers to the 5G battle that uh, is happening nowadays, ignited by the Trump administration. And, and uh, the conclusion of the article is obvious that uh, uh, actually the, the, the battle was good for China because it, uh, it made the, the, the country accelerate the, the process of independence of uh, all this technology because of microchips and, um, and uh, Semiconductors are on the first, one of the very few areas where Chinese uh, is not already the leader in, in, in world technology and, and innovation. And, and uh, then uh, we, uh, you, your presentation uh, reminded me uh, very much of our two weeks in in Tianjin, huh? and uh, I'm. <laughs> I'm going to make a, a couple of questions related to changing that I I knew very well uh, during that period. The, 
The first one is that I remember very vividly when you insisted that I and Elena should go to a, by coincidence, uh, it was happening in Changin at the same time you were there, one very big and important trade fair in uh, artificial intelligence. And you, you made a point and you asked your uh, Chinese uh, colleague, uh, the, te the teachers in, in England to, to go with us. And it was a fantastic afternoon. When we witnessed, we saw there the strengths of, uh, of capabilities, both in production and innovation that you have in the so-called industry 4.0. Huh? Uh, drones and artificial, uh, uh, artificial in intelligence, etc. Then my first question would link that to, 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 to this experience we had there. Huh? Uh, the, the impression we had when we left us you know, in industry 4.0, the West keeps talking about this a lot, and you in China are doing this a lot in a sort of revolutionary way. Uh, I wonder if you could tell, first of all, in terms of Tianjin, do you have one specific uh, program for this type of, uh, let's say, uh, uh, frontier level of innovation and technology related to uh, artificial intelligence, industry 4.0. Hmm? Uh, is there any specific program for that or you use uh, industry 4.0 technologies and innovation to feed into your own Local uh, uh, local projects huh? yeah, that, that you mentioned uh, several of them in, in your presentation. For, for instance, an, another thing that really impressed when when I came back and told my my students and and friends and colleagues that uh, one day you took us to to see the the biggest library, the second biggest library in the. In, in Asia, huh? it was a sort of 45, 50 kilometers trip from the university to that inside Tianjin, we were inside Tianjin. And we passed, let's say for at least 10 kilometers into these new constructions of smart buildings, huh? smart cities. I remember that we stopped in one of these places to, to go to a new ch shopping center to have lunch, etc., etc. fantastic lunch. Uh, the, the question is, uh, I, I was very impressed by the smart cities project that, 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 that you are developing there. Huh? And uh, if you could tell us a bit more about this uh, smart city, smart building project in Tianjin and how they are using radical new technologies in robots and uh, artificial intelligence, things like that. Uh, uh, or let's say, uh, new sources of energy, solar energy, uh, 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 towards a, a sort of green and, and self-contained uh, environment that is uh, linked to the small uh, 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 smart buildings and smart cities uh, project. Huh? Because one thing that I keep uh, comes in, into my mind that is that the, the success that China has in this area of uh, int uh, artificial intelligence, drones, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. One of the reasons, perhaps, is uh, it's because you link these uh, new developments to huge government control uh, from central to local projects in, in different areas. And I remember, uh, and I was just recalling a, a couple of them. Uh, one is the smart cities. Uh, smart buildings project. The other could be the, the One Belt, One Road initiative. Huh? Uh, if you could comment on, on this, I would appreciate very much. The second question I would like to, to put to you is about the role of uh, states banks. Huh? States banks, uh, you have, uh, we have one big state bank in Brazil that's probably one of the biggest uh, or the largest 
in the world that's been unfortunately sort of cannibalized now by this this new administration that you have unfortunately but you have uh, uh, dozens of uh, uh, public go uh, banks at central level and uh, is there anything similar at the municipal level in terms of, of Tianjin in terms of having public uh, uh, banks to uh, uh, help uh, let's say uh, channel uh, financial resources to, to, to this you, you, uh, sort of uh, innovation system. You, you gave in your presentation very important, uh, very important uh, in information and analysis on that. But uh, as your presentation was so co comprehensive, uh, perhaps it was a bit quick uh, to my understanding. And uh, and then, if you could make a comment on that, I would also appreciate very much. The other, perhaps it is related to the first question. You mentioned brief in the Tianjin case, the, the issue of strategic emerging industries. Huh? What are strategic huh? in, in, in terms of what? In, in terms of linking to the federal, to the central government programs or to the local municipal programs, or they are strategic because they they, in, in a sense, uh, put, uh, attempt to put China in the next generation of new technologies. Huh? We know that you are leader uh, in uh, several areas of industry 4.0. Uh, uh, when I came back also in Ireland and I told some friends that uh, you are not using, uh, uh, let's say, cash anymore. Huh? Uh, to use cash in, in China in 2018 was already a nuisance. Huh? Almost nobody used nuisance. Only stupid foreign people like us who use it, cash. You all use uh, uh, your uh, own uh, mobile related payments. Huh? But in this area of, uh, uh, let's say, Industry 4.0, uh, I also think that you, you, you lead in the, if you could comment on this strategic uh, emerging industry, I would be very pleased as well. There are so many questions that we wouldn't have time. Uh, and I know that we, we know that it's already 10 p.m. for you in, in Tianjin. Perhaps no, no, no time to go to a, a karaoke huh? now. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, next time you go there, you go to a karaoke again. Uh, then my, la my last question would be that uh, 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 issue that it's very important. Huh? Uh, the, that normally is not so well studied and analyzed. That the issue that universities in China are allowed to become investors, huh? direct investors. They can invest in new companies. Huh? We know that Lenovo, for instance, is not only a spin-off from uh, the university uh, system or the research system, but it's also owned partially up to now by one uh, of these institutions. And there are so many examples. Uh, and when we speak about this in Brazil, people come with lots of questions. And uh, I would like to, to, to perhaps in, in Tianjin, you have the same thing huh? and, and a huge amount of, of of resources of, uh, of, 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 of uh, uh, sales that companies that are totally uh, uh, controlled or partially controlled by the, by the university system play a significant role in your innovation system. I, would, I, I was saying your presentation was so um, fantastic and impressive that I would have so many questions and perhaps I would uh, try to explore this privately in the next few months via the internet. But for the time being, I think uh, uh, that will be enough uh, from, from my part, particularly I have to, to leave the, uh, the, uh, the floor to, to questions from my colleagues and friends that are with us. Again, Lian, thanks, thanks very much for being with us. And it's really a pleasure and an honor, an honor to, to be with you. Thank you. Okay, thank you. You know, I will try my best to uh, answer these questions. Um, one is, um, you know, for these uh, new areas, uh, if I remember 
correctly, uh, in my city, actually we focus on aid. Uh, we call that key area. And uh, uh, like for this uh, smart city, for this new energy, artificial intelligence. No, since, um, uh, you see, uh, my, uh, my city, uh, since we belong to Beijing, Tianjin, and Hebei, this uh, unit, and uh, one role of the city is um, to take, uh, actually to undertake the research achievements from Beijing. Beijing, you know, lots of uh, uh, key universities, they have lots of uh, research achievements. So one role of my city is um, uh, we take uh, the research achievements from Beijing, from the research in institute, from the universities. I mean, uh, for the it's more like for the technology transfer. Uh, so that is one important role for for my city. And uh, for this, um, uh, you know, uh, for this new, uh, uh, it's like uh, breakthroughs from uh, zero to one is uh, of course, you know, in my city, we have the, also we have the key universities like uh, Tianyu University, Nankai University, and also some other universities, although they, uh, they are not, uh, the ranking is not very high in China, but uh, in certain area, they are, uh, uh, in, uh, I mean, they are quite good. So we, uh, the Tianjin government, the local government, they, they give us support for, for the research institute and the enterprise and the university to, to do this uh, kind of research. Uh, but more importantly is, um, you know, we uh, also, we invited, uh, you know, the, uh, the big company, our the universities, all the research, uh, you know, like uh, the research uh, institute from the CAS, the China Academy of Science. So they set up branches in, in Tianjin. And uh, those uh, organizations, uh, I mean, outside of Tianjin, so they work together with, uh, you know, the organizations inside of Tianjin uh, to, you know, to do this uh, one to zero, uh, sorry, to, to do this uh, zero to one, this, this kind of research. Mm, that is uh, one. And also for the financial support, financial support to the innovation. So this one is, uh, uh, you see the bank, we, we have the state owned bank. Uh, you, you, I think we have four, uh, because I'm not uh, a banking uh, expert. So to my understanding or to my knowledge, uh, the, the knowledge I know is uh, uh, we, we, have state, uh, we have four state owned banks. Uh, but also we have lots of, uh, you know, mixed uh, ownership banks or local local banks. Actually, each uh, small cities, they also have their own banks. And also we have the village banks. So we have different kind of uh, banks. So the banks uh, is uh, one for the state-owned banks. So they follow the strategy, the national strategy, all the, you know, the, the policies. Uh, from uh, the local government, I mean, from the uh, the uh, Tianjin government. So they give uh, incentives, they give support, they give financial support to the uh, to the enterprise. Uh, but uh, the detailed arrangement, you no, know, since uh, they are commercial banks, basically they are commercial banks. So once uh, they they give uh, uh, like uh, they give uh, loans. Uh, without um, uh, without uh, interest rate, then uh, who will cover? Uh, you know who will cover this? Actually, I'm not uh, very sure. I think uh, maybe the local government they they you know they 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 will cover this. So for the companies, uh, sorry for the banks. One is uh, they have um, I mean they try the innovative ways. They have different kind of uh, innovations inside of their own system, uh, but that's. That's for the uh, for the because they they are they're doing business you know they are the commercial banks, and uh, for the innovation to support the innovation, uh, my understanding is you know they just uh, follow follow the the policy uh, follow the government policy to to do this kind of things. 
So that is second one. For the third one is uh, for this uh, strategic uh, emerging industry. Uh, this, this one, you know, it, uh, each uh, province, they set up uh, their own uh, uh, strategic emerging industries. I mean, they, they fix, uh, you know, the, those uh, area, you know, that is uh, uh, this province. So they give uh, special support. So for that one, you know, the decision they made is uh, is a jointly one. One is uh, you, they, you have to follow the national strategy. So that is one. And the second kind of thing is uh, for each uh, province, uh, you know, they have their own uh, situation. So they put uh, these two together to uh, make uh, the decision of the strategic emergency, uh, uh, sorry, emerging uh, uh, industry. Uh, my city is, um, uh, my city, I think either eight or nine, I, I, I don't remember clearly, but roughly it's like that, you know, like a new energy, like, um, like um, uh, electronic automobile or artificial intelligence is there or not there, I, I'm not sure, but later I, I, I will check. I will check. So, you know, they, they make uh, this kind of decision. Uh, so that is uh, the third question. And the last one is, uh, you know, the enterprise uh, uh, of the university. Um, you see, actually lots of debate earlier, you know, lots of debate about uh, this um, uh, uh, enterprise owned by the universities because it's very difficult to, to uh, uh, you know, for, that's for the ownership, that is some problem. And uh, uh, that is one, you know, earlier lots of, uh, lots of, uh, uh, I mean, lots of problems happened, uh, you know, uh, in the university uh, because of this uh, uh, enterprise. So recently we have a reform uh, inside of the university. I think also it's re related to the government policy. It's trying to, um, uh, two things, uh, you know, we are doing now. One is uh, to make uh, clear, you know, for the ownership of the uh, enterprise, you know, for this uh, uh, ownership, uh, you know, University own some uh, ownership, also you know the individuals, maybe some other companies. So uh, to make this uh, this kind of uh, uh, enterprise just like a common enterprise, uh, it, it's similar to the others. So that is one reform, and another reform is uh, for some universities. Some university set up special organizations to coordinate uh, the uh, enterprise, I mean, to manage the enterprise of the university. Uh, like uh, one university, I know that they have uh, more, than, uh, more than 10 enterprise, uh, more than 10 enterprise. So now they uh, set up a special, uh, you know, uh, special organization to uh, manage this, uh, uh, this enterprise. So that is uh, number first, sorry. Uh, okay, thank you. Thank you, Professor Lian, uh, for your answers. And uh, I'll now ask the audience if someone wants to make a question for Professor Lian. Does anybody want to make a question? No? If nobody comes, I'll, I'll have another one. No, please. <laughs> Everybody try. Please, if you, uh, if you want to make a question and you are shy because of the English language, uh, Marina, mm -hmm. myself, and Elena may help uh, you. Please. Uh, you can write, if you want, you can write in Portuguese the question in, in the chat and we can translate to Professor Lian. Uh, the question I'm going to put to you, Lia, is not related to your presentation directly. It's related to, to, to the work we, we learned that you, 
you were doing uh, when we are in, in Tianjin, huh? and which is uh, not so well known in, in, in Brazil, and I would say all over the world, because most of the discussion about China concentrates in the manufacturing sector uh, and in industry in general. And I think that the relevance of your work for countries like Brazil is, is huge. Hmm? which is, uh, I remember that you, one of the things, the first thing that you said that uh, struck the most was the information, uh, the discussion you gave uh, saying that uh, more than 40% of the income of people in the agricultural area in China was not from agricultural products, but from manufactured goods. Yeah? And you showed us lots of examples of, of that. Huh? And uh, as we are uh, a, a country with, uh, with a big part of our territory, being, uh, with huge, uh, significant amount of small farmers, I'm thinking about the Northeast, but not only the Northeast, the Amazon, and even parts, other parts of, of the country. Uh, I would, uh, let's say, tease you to, to tell a bit more about that, particularly uh, the way uh, that uh, using these new technologies of the, uh, of, of the internet, mobiles, etc., uh, the, the linkage between the production and distribution of these goods produced by uh, people living in the countryside. And connecting it with the uh, with consumers in uh, let's say uh, cities and more modern parts of the country. If you could elaborate on on that and the and the connection between let's say the agricultural uh, part of the country uh, and uh, and uh, and the uh, and the city uh, and which is a particular important uh, link. This also with the policies that you are having to radically and drastically reduce the poverty level in, in China. Uh, we, we know that some of the, the, the recent uh, policy formulations that you had in China, you are proposing to end poverty in the next couple of years, to, to finish that. And that's a huge achievement that I think everybody here would be very pleased to, to listen your your comments on that, please. Uh, yeah, hi. Uh, you see the poverty elevation. Uh, I think that's a national. Also, you know, the the it's a national uh, strategy uh, that will be end very soon. Uh, very soon, I think by the end of this year, and then uh, we come to the rural uh, revitalization. Rural revitalization come, you know, means that you know we use industry, we use industry uh, to uh, for the rural development. So that is uh, slightly different from uh, poverty elevation. And uh, since uh, you know, IT, IT is uh, it's like an infrastructure. Uh, it's an infrastructure in in China, and. Uh, Almost everyone, you know, they, we, we have this mobile. And then uh, we use, uh, you know, we use WeChat for communication for the, uh, the money transfer, uh, even in the very uh, poor area. And uh, also um, uh, for this uh, poverty elevation, you know, national uh, program, since, uh, you know, e uh, many uh, big companies, uh, like uh, each company, you know, you are responsible for one, uh, uh, one county for the poverty elevation for one county, and uh, each uh, you know each uh, university or each uh, government organization they're also you know responsible for one uh, village or something like uh, one uh, rich uh, uh, province. You know you are responsible uh, you know to help uh, the less developed area, less developed province. That's how it's, you know, it's like a national one. It's a national one, you know, it's, uh, we all work together for the, for the poverty elevation. And uh, now, uh, since uh, many people, you know, they come back to the village, many uh, enterprise, you know, uh, they uh, 
set up companies in in a quite a remote area and uh, the farmers uh, many farmers they can easily you know you, they can easily get a job in the in the village and uh, so industry uh, i mean many farmers uh, many farmers actually they already become the farmer workers Earliest they come to the city to take a job, but right now still they come to the city to take a job. But uh, uh, before is uh, uh, before is um, how to say that? You know, even like uh, the people in the middle area of China, or even in the uh, it's uh, how the uh, the rural people, you know, all the rural people, they come to the city to take jobs. But that is in the past. Now it's only very, very poor area, very, very remote area. So the people then they 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 come to the city to take jobs. The others, they all, you know, they, they can easily get a job in the, in the village. Uh, so that is uh, that is one. No, since. Um, uh, the industry, all the company, all the cooperative, I mean, the farmers own uh, organization, the corporate, the, uh, the cooperatives, all the farmers uh, companies, you know, they, uh, they are in the villages. So since they are, they are business, they're the, com uh, the companies, they are behavior, all the business activities, at least very similar, very similar to the companies in the city, uh, in the city. So, uh, IT or internet, uh, we can't see the different, the big difference between the city and the village, uh, and the village. So, like uh, now, it's uh, very popular. You know, the the people they sell their products, uh, the agricultural products online. Online is uh, it's just like now. You know, we we have this uh, online meeting, and then uh, they also use this. Like now they work in the field. They work in the field that the others, they can see. Uh, they can see. So they, you know, through this kind of online uh, living uh, broadcasting, so they sell their products. And it's quite exciting. You know, the situation is uh, it's very, very exciting. And then uh, for this exciting situation, make another thing happen is for some, uh, city companies, I mean, some company in the city, because of this, uh, the virus uh, problem, actually, you know, uh, like, uh, 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 take the example of textile industry. Since uh, many contract, you know, those uh, contract before, you know, the contract come to India or come to, uh, you know, some other countries. But now since uh, this uh, virus, so those uh, contracts then come back to China again. But uh, the Chinese company can got lots of contract, but then uh, they don't have enough workers. Uh, the reason is, uh, you know, it's not easy for them to get the farmer workers. Since uh, though the farmers, they can get a job in their hometown, in the village, then they don't want to travel. They want to stay with the family. And also they can, you know, they can have a good uh, income. So that's what <laughs> become a challenge for the city, uh, uh, for the for the city enterprise. So actually it's very, uh, it's very exciting, very exciting. My feeling is that you no know, since uh, uh, starting from next year, then we come to the, uh, the rural revitalization, come to this uh, national strategy instead of uh, poverty, uh, poverty elevation. And then uh, rural industry, rural industrialization, uh, will, you know, will develop very fast, very fast. That's my feeling. Oh, that's my feeling. Yeah. Thank you, Professor Lian, uh, mm -hmm. for your comments. Uh, I think now I will pass the word to Elena, to Professor Elena, to end our webinar. Okay. Hello again. Um, Professor Lian, thank you very much for your presentation today, for being today with us. You gave us a, a very com comprehensive description of the institutional structure and organization of the dance 
Chinese system of innovation. Very, very good. And also, you discussed with us mainly today the regional and the changing innovation system. You discussed it with perspectives for 2022, uh, asking where and should it go, and highlighting your vision of the innovation system as a living organism, the integration, the perspective of integration of the Tianjin innovation system into the major national strategy for, for coordination development of the Be Beijing, Tianjin, Hebei hub, and the main goals and details of the planet strategy. And also you, you gave us the main um, points of the three selected cases you used as example. Starting with the case very dear for us on the role of the universities and the, the, in the innovation system of Tianjin. Uh, and detailing the main goals and conditions required to, for them to achieve uh, the goals, the targets. Of course, uh, your targets and numbers, the numbers you showed shared with us are always quite impressive. Professor Lian, in the name of Hege uh, Sish, as Cassiolato mentioned, uh, I renew our thanks uh, for you to be today with us. And I would ask uh, you and all the participants uh, of this webinar the favor of opening the, their cameras for us to register this moment with a photo. Would that be possible? Please open your photo, your, your cameras for us to make a picture. <laughs> How to do that? Abre a camera, yeah. pessoal, para a gente tirar foto e registrar. Bom, and uh, I bid you good night. It's uh, half past 10 for you p.m. in the night, and I wish you well. Uh, please send our best regards to your colleagues working at the Center of Inno Innovation. Uh, and we have to tell you, Cassiolato has already advanced that we miss you, or you in special, and all the other colleagues, and all, all, also those kar karaoke nights, <laughs> wonderful singers and performers. Professor, <laughs> thank you very much indeed. <laughs> thank you, Professor Lian. Thank you very much. Thank Perhaps you. Next, next year, either in China or in Brazil. We hope sure, that sure.